About a month or so ago, I published a video titled Quick Easy Gift or Easy Craft Show Sale, something something along those lines. It was just kind of a one-off. I, I didn't mean to start a series, but maybe I will start a series because I was looking through my list of videos the other day looking for something, and I saw how many views that one has, and holy cow, apparently that's a popular subject. So I want to help out any new turners or anybody that's looking for that sort of thing, a uh, quick, easy gift gifts or, or something you could sell at a craft show. So this one's going to be right along those lines. Uh, this is a piece of laurel. Comes to us from our friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. I don't know how big laurel gets. I, I know they grow hedges out of it. This is six inches across. Well, five, five and a half inches across. Six inches this way. And it's about two and a half inches thick. So that's probably the trunk of a laurel. I, I don't really know. But it could easily be a branch section, something easy to find anywhere you go, any kind of wood. This is this particular piece is very dense. I measured it at 8% moisture content, so it's quite dry, but it's heavy, heavy, heavy. You can see I've already drilled a hole there for my woodworm screw. You can also see, if you look carefully, that it's higher right here than it is in the middle. So if we mount it up that way, the jaw is going, the jaw of the chuck is going to set here and it's never going to set here. And we want it to. So I'm going to use a little shim over here and I'll show you how I'm going to do that when we get it mounted up on the lathe, which is next. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Wood Shop. Howdy! I'm going to put it on this woodworm screw. I'm going to use this to shim it on this side and I'll show you how that's going to work. So we want to get to the point where the high side is just about to touch. And I don't know, you can see that's the case there. It's, it's just about to touch, or maybe you can't see. It's hard for me to get this light over there. But it's just about to touch there, so I'm going to take this, this little wedge shim. I'm just going to po poke it in there. And the reason we're doing this so when we turn the bottom, we don't have to turn away a lot because if we didn't do this, it would be cocked and you'd turn a whole lot away from one side of the bottom and not the other side. And that's just a waste of wood. So now that's good and tight. And I should just be able to break this off like this. And there's our shim cut in the jaws of the chuck. So we have a, a good good contact here that's important and our bottom is uh, fairly parallel with the top so we, we won't waste a lot of wood. Never want to waste wood. And the piece is small enough we probably don't need tailstock support but why not? Extra safe. And what I like to do is turn the lathe on and then advance the ram until it makes good contact that way it'll find its own center. And then we'll bring up the tool rest. Well, actually, in this case, and this is something else I should probably talk about, people might say, well, why didn't you mount the flat side up? You already have kind of a bowl shape going on down here, and wouldn't that waste less wood? Well, yes, but more importantly, the reason I do this, for anyone that watches my channel on a regular basis, they know we want to have a live edge. Why, why not use that bark to our advantage? Why turn it all away? That's, that's the outside of the tree. That makes it more of a, a living thing. And I think that's just so important. You know, anybody can turn a round bowl, but to incorporate some of the nature in it, that just makes it extra special. Okay, let's see what kind of speed we can get here. Should be fairly well balanced. We'll go about 7.35. And I'm just going to work from the top side, the bark side, towards the bottom in an effort to keep this bark on there. If I come up this way, I'm just going to lift that bark right off. Save that bark. I'm going to be using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to wear a glove, mask, and face shield on.
Okay, both ends are fully round now. I'm going to come down here and start working on the bottom to give me an idea of what I want to do with the side profile. See how much room I have to work with. Also at this point I feel like I can do away with the tailstock. The piece is fairly small and we have it mostly round so there's not a lot of knocking about on here. I wouldn't be able to do much with the tailstock in place anyway. Although I will be using it to mark out for a tenon or a recess, whichever one we decide to go with. I've got just a little bit more to remove here, but I'm going to go ahead and mark out for, I think we'll do a recess on this little, little piece. Seems like a lot of folks prefer a recess. Again, letting the uh, live center find its own spot. <laughs> and then I can just take my pencil and lay it along the live center. And that'll give me a real good guide of what I need for either a tenon or a recess. It needs to be a little bit larger than this for a recess and a little bit smaller for a tenon. At least that's with the standard 50 millimeter jaws, which is what I'm using today. My jaws have a dovetail on the outside of them and I have a dovetail chisel to put that dovetail on the inside of that recess. Well, it sure does turn nice. So, what kind of profile are we going to put on here, Phil? Well, I don't know. We'll probably just keep it simple. I guess I'll just try for a nice sweeping taper from the base all the way up to the top. So, I need to get rid of this bump that I have here and tie the top edge to the bottom edge. just want to do a little bit of shear scraping and that's laying the gouge on its side and just using this bottom wing to scrape along here. Time for sanding. I was able to get such a nice finish off my very sharp gouge that I think I can start at about 240 and I'll be using a two inch disc for that and I'll work up through at least 400 and then I think we'll try a different finish something I've never tried before at least as a final finish. Let me get my mask on and we will do some sanding. Lay the spinning in reverse at 350.
Then I'll do 320, 400, and I don't know, maybe 600. I'll let you know what I decide, and uh, then we'll put some finish on there. See you in a bit. With most of the things I turn, I'm unable to use these Axe products, but this time I think I can. So I'm going to give them a try. I did stop at 400 grit. I'm going to start with the abrasive paste, and then I'll finish with the polishing restoring paste and this is my first time ever using it directly on wood I've always polished a sanding sealer or shellac with it but this has abrasives in it just like sandpaper and so this should further smooth the pretty fine finish I have on here and then it's food safe as well so that's nice I'm not gonna put any in the center there that's where I'll sign it and my pen wouldn't stick to, the pen ink wouldn't stick to uh, the wax in this product. So I'm just rubbing it in and then I'll start the lathe and we'll rub it in a little more with it spinning. I want to be sure I get it well covered, give this stuff a good chance to work. Lathe is spinning at only about 200 RPM right now. Just spreading it around. Then I'll use some, some a clean spot on the paper towel here. I'll turn the speed up. We'll try about 600. And just continue to rub it in. Then another clean spot. I'm going to turn the speed up about 1000 RPM. Last little clean spot. You just want to keep doing this until no more comes off on the paper. So now I'm going to grab a fresh paper towel and I'm going to turn it up to about 1500 RPM. Probably isn't necessary, but why not? Just the least little bit on there, so there shouldn't be any on this side. And there's not. Yeah, that does feel pretty nice. And now we'll try the polishing paste. I won't show you that. It's, it's going to look exactly like I'm doing here. I'll show you the result here in just a couple minutes. Well, I'd say it looks pretty nice and it sure feels good. And that's a quick easy finish. And like I said, food safe. Alright, time to turn it around and start working on the inside. I've turned the piece around and have the chuck expanded into the recess. We're going to be turning at 1300 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. Here's where I just want to check for rim thickness. I thought I might go real thin, but there's a crack. Uh, it's right here, and it, it, it's about an inch and a half long on the outside. I don't see it on the inside. That's the only crack in the piece that I've seen. Uh, so I, I, I thought I'd go thin, but on the other hand, I do like to, you know, the reason we're doing a live edge is so that you see that bark. So I don't want to do away with all of it, but maybe we can go a little bit thinner than we are. Yeah, that, that looks better.
I have to remember I'm on a recess and I don't want to get too close to the bottom of that recess, do I? So I'm, I like to check, you know, I, I just don't trust myself. We're at about three quarters of an inch. We'll get it down to around a quarter inch, same as the wall thickness. I'm going to do a little bit of shear scraping right here. Probably about a half an inch now. Yep. When you have wood that turns this nicely, it's easy to just keep going and get carried away, you know. do one last check but I'm pretty sure we're there yep actually about three sixteenths that, that little knot there is sticking up that got it okay time for sanding this bark is not terribly rough, but I want to sand it anyway, so I'm going to use my Sandoflex at 180 grit just to kind of smooth out what we have. And then I will switch to my 2 inch disc, and I think I can get away with 180 grit. I did. I started at 240 on the outside, but inside might need just a, a little coarser. So 180 up through 400, and I'll show you what both of those things look like as soon as I get my mask on. Yeah, it's not going to take much. And then with the lathe spinning forward at about 350 RPM. Easy peasy. I'll bring you back in a bit and we'll put some more Axe paste on there. See you in a bit. Well, let's sand it up very nicely. I'm going to go ahead and apply the Axe abrasive paste as I did on the outside. I'm just applying it to a paper towel. Now this is not supposed to be applied directly to wood, to bare wood. It's supposed to be applied over a sanding sealer, which is the way I've used it in the past. I've also used it over shellac, and it worked uh, great both ways, both times, but I just I've seen people do it on just bare wood, so I thought I'd give it a try. And I'm going to apply it to the bark as well. Now, as far as spinning it on the bark part, I don't think I'll be able to do that. So I'm just going to basically do what I'm doing right now, but I'll do it faster. I just kind of buff it like that. And, you know, I don't know if that'll work either. This is, this is just kind of an experiment. If you can save a step, and, and Axe is not saying this is uh, the right thing to do, so I'm, I'm just telling you other people do it, that's all. But I just thought if you could save a step and you're selling these kinds of things, it saves time, times money, that sort of thing. I don't sell my stuff, but 
I know lots of people do and want to and and that's what this video is about. Either selling it or making just a quick gift to give away. Okay, I think I've got it covered pretty well. So now I'll just spin the lathe up at about 200 RPM. And just rub it in real well. You see it bounces when it gets out here. Where we have uh, two high spots and two low spots. It'll bounce less at a higher speed. But I just can't, I just can't hold it out here. I'm only hitting the high spots on the bark. Unless I press really hard and then that's going to hurt. So I'm not going to do that. So I think that's probably rubbed in pretty well. Now I'm going to turn to a clean spot. Turn the speed up. About a thousand RPM. And see that goes over those high and low spots a lot easier now. And I can do it on the bark, but I'm only hitting the high spots. So I'll just do it like this on the low spots. And then another clean spot. We want to do this until it's all gone, until there's no more on the paper towel. Hardly anything that time. Nothing there. So I'll just do the same thing with the polishing and restoring paste. And I'll bring you back here in a few minutes and we'll take a look at it. So again, I guess the point I'm trying to make is uh, if, if you're selling these at a craft show, my thinking is because it has the live edge, uh, let's say that let's say that uh, a, a little salad bowl would sell for $20. I have no idea what they'd sell for, but let's say a salad bowl, just a plain round salad bowl, nicely turned, nicely finished, sells for 20 bucks. I'm thinking this would sell for 30 bucks because you've got You've got evidence of the tree there. You've got the bark. You've got life, live edge. And that's just, just my opinion. I've been to a bazillion craft shows in my life and I've seen a lot of people selling a lot of things, including wooden bowls and whatnot. This kind of thing always is higher priced and sells faster than something just plain round. It's a pretty nice grain. Nothing fantastic about it. But it's, you know, it's just very nice. This particular piece is perfect. Perfect. There's no flaws whatsoever. It pretty much looks the same from one side or the other. There's the bottom. Just a quick, easy gift. Quick, easy sale. Don't you think? What do you think? Let me know what you think. Thank you, Dave from Calmwood Creations for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, wow, that is really cool of you. Thank you so much for that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.